all right i'm here at gartner data and analytics summit in each day two look who i have with me shashank gar ceo of infocepts and i'm so happy to have you back shashank thank you ravit it's always been a pleasure to talk to you and thank you for hosting me yes always always love to you know your your insights because the community loves it i feel when i talk to you i'm always so updated about things so it's always so good uh, thanks for again uh, visiting uh coming on the rabbit show and uh to be honest uh, i'm pretty sure the the community knows you pretty well now but uh, would you like to introduce yourself what's happening new at infocepts and what have you been hearing from leaders here uh thank you ravit so uh, just my quick background and infocepts uh, we are a data and ai solutions firm been in business for about 20 years yep uh we complete the whole value chain of data right from ingestion to cleansing to management all the way to analytics and driving now yep. building lots and lots of ai applications for our clients driving business outcomes for them nice um we come to this show every year this has been the third year uh, for us yeah and it's been fantastic lots and lots of energies i love the fact that cartner brings all of us together and lots of interesting conversations here okay fantastic thanks for sharing that we've been hearing a lot around ai it's not a new thing yes. anymore like i i think it's getting matured uh but i would love to know a little from you as well what are the, some of the ground breaking things that you've been hearing in ai would you like to share it with our audience today? obviously you know everybody knows that um, generative ai has sort of um, pushed the interest uh, right from the board levels into all kinds of ai applications and ai has existed for many many years now True. but if you remember same time last year right and the hype um, open ai created with the launch of um, their models the large yep. language models right and everybody just went into this frenzy of what's going to happen the state of uncertainty i i think um, over the last few quarters we have seen that settle down a little bit right um but that's not to say that the hype has gone away right so right. we are I think we have all sort of experienced that over the last one year in positive ways. Yeah. Yes, you occasionally do see examples of models going crazy and chatbots doing stuff, uh, creating liability. You know, mm. this one recent case that came out from an airline without taking names, right? I mean, yeah, accidents are happening, but nearly not to the extent of what I saw as being predicted. And yeah. we've always been in the camp that. Uh, AI and now generative AI is a general purpose technology mm. like the internet you know like many tech waves that we have seen right yeah and it's up to us as solution providers and uh, uh, our clients who are focused on business outcomes on how we're going to use it for truly driving innovation and business value this is exactly what i was wanting to hear and uh, thanks for sharing all the insights yeah, like i absolutely. said i always get to learn more about you know new things that are happening in the space from you all right so i also wanted to ask about you know the real time uh, practical examples actually in generative ai in uh, that you've been seeing around shashank yeah i it's a great question and you know it's it's really important to sort of um, differentiate between hype and reality right true um as i said over the last year many of us have experienced um generative ai in positive uh, ways and we've also seen some accidents right But yeah if i were to classify what's real today yeah um i'll say three things yeah actually i'll say two things and then one possibility that i see in this yeah. future right one um general purpose copilots right mm. I know Microsoft um, Copilot we have experienced in their office applications you know Bing uh, chat um, other copilots for developers right yeah. so just in general productivity gains for many of us and I again you know I call them general purpose copilots yeah right? just their abilities to uh, summarize uh, spit out you know pieces of code that we can all use and make things faster is just right. amazing right yeah. and, and everybody uh, must be doing it we are in forceps are embracing it uh, full on uh, we yeah. have this man plus machine model so we used to be a consulting shop right and we've transformed all of that into if you're not using any of these co pilots then you know there, there's something in that particular scenario that can change yeah right? exactly uh, the second application that i'm very very excited about and i i've started calling them uh, business um, or persona based business assistants yeah 
right? So, and I'll give a few example. You know, if you yeah, think about sure. anybody uh, who is either facing clients, you know, either in a uh, revenue increase role or customer service, right? Um, you now have the ability to create um, an assistant using. Um, I, I don't call them large language models. You don't have to use large language models because they're expensive to train, right? Yeah. But take any s- small language model. Mm. Right? Strip out everything that uh, you don't need all the internet knowledge for that uh, yeah. model, right? Just a simple language model. Bring it in house and train them on your proprietary contextual data, mm. and you know test it over time and ensure that. They can start doing things which uh, they can enable all your front-facing staff to do right. amazing things yeah. which have never been done before. And I can see several applications. Right? If we talk about pharmaceutical clients, you look at you know uh, all the uh, field forces. Right? Yeah. When they go and call on doctors, you can enable them with the latest and latest in uh, what's happening in the industry. You can yeah. enable them with. Um, all the research that your own company is doing, right? Yeah. And you can apply the same paradigm to customer service. You can apply the same paradigm for anybody who is talking to a client, right? Right. A- and you can just improve their productivities, uh, and that you cannot do using general purpose copilots. Exactly. That requires more effort. Mm. And I see uh, many of our clients and organizations already starting to build pilots there. So very very excited. Right. The third and you know, which is not happening uh, today, but I was just discussing with somebody uh, just this um, uh, morning, right? And think of uh, this concept of autonomous agents, right? So you mm. apply the concept of an autonomous car, which is again assistive in nature, right? But it just doesn't do one thing. So yeah. imagine multiple uh, assistive um, AI bots, right? Um, all. Uh, well coordinated with technology in a workflow, so that one one bot does one thing, second bot does the second thing, but they all sort of work together, mm. almost uh, become like an agent. And I'll give an example. You know, let's say you're working on supply chain optimization. Right? Yeah, there are several tasks that are involved, right? Uh, data analysis, ensuring the data is clean, ensuring that we look at how the inventory levels are, ensuring True. that we make all those decisions, right? Yeah, yeah. All of that um, cannot just be achieved through one model. Right, right? exactly. So you bring it all together and you've got somebody who's running 24 by 7, right? Assisting, you know, making that supply chain super optimized, right? So that's how I see, you know, this really benefiting clients going forward. So again, General purpose co-pilots, we are seeing them, we experience them yeah. very real. Yeah. Um, organization taking small language models and train them, training them on their own proprietary data. Yeah. Uh, that's what we are doing for many, many of our clients. Love it. And yeah. lastly, going towards autonomous agents, yeah. which are again based on use cases. This is very interesting. Thanks for sharing that. Shashank, that also brings me to another important question because I've seen Infocepts at the forefront of data and analytics, NEI. Uh, I'm pretty sure you might be getting questions day in and out about generative AI because there's a lot of mis- misconceptions as well. Yeah. How do you solve those for your customers, clients and prospects as well? I think um, I'll address it in a, in a slightly different way. Right? And we have seen um, the kind of questions change over the last two quarters. Okay, interesting. Right. So we have gone from deep concerns around data, privacy and security right. um, to uh, you know, a state where, and, and it basically meant that we can't touch it mm. now. Mm. To and thanks to all the work that you know the large platforms are doing and everyone else is doing in educating uh, the clients and people, um, to saying uh, we know there is a way to address them, right? But can we do it in a compliant way mm. with the regulatory standards, right? Right. So that's a shift. So it is a shift from. Um, you know, fear. Yeah. To we know it's possible. Let's work together to ensure that we are complying with the regulations as we put these things together. That's yeah. that's one bucket. Yeah. Right? Um, second, we've all gone from what used to be a lot of skepticism. Right. Mm. Is this real? Can it really do things like you know? You're telling me that you know, 
uh, is going to replace a data analyst. So can it really help yeah. in mining all the data that we spent years in putting together and curating and putting all the analytics? You are saying that you know we can um, this can do it. I don't believe it, right? To oh, I know that it's never going to replace humans there, yeah. but it can be useful for my team, which is you know accountable for cleansing data, or yeah. it is um, uh, good for my team, which is building out the metadata and the business glossary. Right, right. Or it is it can really assist my data analyst create better data stories because it sure. has great content creation capabilities. Right? Exactly. So again, skepticism to looking at possibilities, right? Right. Um, lastly, you know, and again, this happens with all technology waves, all general purpose technologies, yeah. is the fear of losing jobs. And I think um, I don't have a good answer. I'm not here to say that uh, no jobs will be lost. And I'm not here to say that the jobs that we'll create, because all of the tech platform leaders came out and say, oh, this is going to create a lot of new jobs as well. And, and yes, but um, it's not clear to me. But I'm definitely mm. in the camp which says that uh, as with any technology wave, um, yes, there will be some jobs that will be lost, but we'll all find new ways of using that technology. Exactly. And find new ways to add value to our businesses. True. Right? And I see that, you know, with a lot of our clients, right? So they are really, uh, we are helping our clients equip their workforce, uh, cope up with co-pilots, the assistive technologies, and building true AI-led transformation Right. so that um, they can just do more. Okay. Right? Things that they never thought were possible. Yeah. We just open new possibilities. No, I like it. And really strong perspective about that. You uh, you said it very right in terms of, you know, obviously with the new tech that kind of comes into the game, new wave that comes, there'll be jobs lost, but there might be more job opportunities as well that might come in and which might actually make maybe the work more easier, agiler and faster. Yeah, I mean, um, my message to uh, people who are in this field and who are experiencing um, this uh, this wave yeah. is to just equip yourselves, you know, find True. ways to add value in areas that you just never thought were possible, which wow. now they are. Yeah. So extend yourselves. I see this as a huge extension opportunity for a lot of our people. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's about getting faster and better and with doing all more. the new tools. Yeah. Doing more. Doing more. One more question around AI itself. So can you tell us more about how uh, Infocepts is adding AI into the data products and uh, how are you getting the game up for your clients? Absolutely. Um, so, Ravit, um, as I, I, I've been saying and I've said this before, right? So, Infoceps is a AI-first mindset company, True. which means that um, we are constantly looking for not just using AI to solve newer problems, but also re-looking at everything that we do and say, how do we apply the AI-first mindset? Yeah. So just to give an example, right? We just spoke about our man plus machine model, which is we call them hyperproductive engineers. So everybody at Infoceps, whether they are a data engineer, they are data analyst, they are a BI analyst, is going to first look at AI tools to see whether they can improve the way they look at quality of the data. They True. can automatically uh, build algorithms. They can automatically auto create the analytics, or they can create better stories using AI tools. Yeah. Right? So that's yeah. our hyperproductive um, engineer model. Uh, then all our solutions, and I'll mm. just give you some examples, right? So I see a lot of clients still failing with their AI investments, and that's been a traditional problem, whether it's lack of quality of data, um, whether figuring out whether the data has signals, whether we are solving the right problem, all of that just takes a lot of time, right? Yeah, exactly. We have an AI-first model, and we built a, a platform called Discovery AI, mm. which is really your a CDO's best friend or a CEO's best friend when it comes to system of experimentation. Oh, okay. So nice. Imagine all your AI experiments or modeling or data science experiments being visible to you in one single pane. Mm. And you know exactly where it is stuck. Is it in a data side? Is it in the value side? Or have you have you productionized it, but you're not failing to realize the value, right? Yeah. All of that in one single pane. So that's you know our discovery AI platform. Nice. And we are getting it to lots and lots of clients using it now. Um, we've got um, a, a, a very special play around um, workforce. We call it the employee uh, E360 model. 
Yes. Which is not just um, built, you know, collecting all your, so think of a customer data platform and apply that to employees, the same mm. concept, right? And all things employee in one single place, right? Um, powered by AI, mm. so all the data processing, uh, auto creation of insights, auto creation of predictions, where required manual feature engineering to ensure that you are really predicting what's going to happen. Yeah. And once you've predicted, all the actions are done through the same platform. Right? So it's a true AI-driven decision intelligence platform yeah. with uh, insights, action, insights, predictions, and actions all in one platform. Okay. Uh, so just you know, these are some examples where we are yeah, helping exactly. you know, our clients, not just um, our engineering side, but also our platforms that we are building today. You all are deep into the game of AI. That's what I know. And uh, to be honest, I've spoken to the team as well. Last year at the Innovative Day, I've heard uh, you all showcase everything, what teams are doing. And I, I was uh, lucky enough to be there. Yeah. And uh, you guys are doing yeah, you guys are doing it again this year. I, I was thrilled to see what Infocept has done in terms of various sectors, but how you are implementing AI with all the right experimentation as well. And, you know, you guys really have the we'll have use to cases. We'll have you uh, back there this year. We yeah. are doing that in April. And yeah. uh, this year, uh, many of our clients are joining us. Nice. So, okay, fantastic. What what's happened, uh, what's changed between last year and this year is lots of clients have come back and said, we love your innovation platform and we would like to you to experiment on our behalf these use yeah, cases yeah, yeah. and that's just gone really really well i love it to be honest that's one of the real things that i've seen at infocepts and uh, the best thing about it is you're all open about experimenting new things if you have a use case if you have an enterprise leader coming with a problem yeah. you kind of get to the solution real quick to them and that kind of makes it stronger like that's what i Usually, I mean, see we are works. in the phase where, uh, at least in the field of AI, yeah, I don't think anybody's got perfect answers. Yeah, um, exactly. The field is evolving. Yeah, uh, especially with the large language models, we have seen whatever benchmarks uh, people are creating, let's say a quarter ago, um, around cost or around uh, you know accuracy. Yeah, um, someone else is going to come and beat it. It's that's happening all the time. And the yep. best way to do it is not to put a stop to these experiments and assume that this gets better. Yeah. And continue that experimentation and when you are comfortable with the accuracy and cost, you are you know, ready for deployment. This is lovely. Shashank, uh, it's such a pleasure to always have you on the show. You have all the great insights and I know you talk to a lot of enterprise leaders, uh, you talk to a lot of data leaders out there and then uh, you are in the circle of the data and AI community uh, where you're sharing, you're doing, uh, and Infocepts always, I feel, are the doers in this space. So thanks for always visiting us, sharing great insights with our community as well. Yeah. It's such a pleasure to have you on the Ravit Show. Thank you, Ravit. Just a um, last uh, message from my side. Yeah, um, please. Uh, for all your viewers. Uh, if you are somebody who is uh, in the data and AI industry and uh, is wanting to make sense of what's happening, yeah, um, I would say use this as an opportunity to extend yourself. Uh, and do more. Uh, if you're on the enterprise side yeah. and you're looking for um, help to navigate the AI wave, you yeah. know, call upon us. Yeah. Uh, we're happy to come implement a system of experimentation for you, handhold, and how to really train that data for the language models for creating all those assistive persona based uh, yeah. you know assistance for your workforce. Exactly. And you know, let's build great things together. Fantastic. I love it. Thanks for uh, Thank doing what you do and thanks for visiting the Ravid Thank Show. You. Thank Bye you. Bye.